Good morning. My name is Bong Aquino. I'm a minister of the International Churches of Christ, Philippines, currently serving in the province of Cavite. Isang malaking kagalakan para sa akin ang mabigyan ng pagkakataon to share the lesson today. Kahapon ni aking ipinagdiwang ang aking ikat 27 year bilang isang disipulo ni Jesus. Maraming salamat kay Amor Salonga at kay Bobby Duloy na nag-invite at nag-study ng Bible sa akin. Para sa mga nakakakilala sa akin, alam ninyo that I love endurance sports. I love doing triathlons. And through the years, I have finished several already, including an Ironman in 2018. In triathlon, meron tinatawag na transition area. The transition area is the area where you change from one discipline to another. Ito ay maaring from swimming to cycling or from cycling to running. Transition one is where you store your bike gear and then transition from swim to bike. And then transition two is where you store your run gear when you transition from bike to run. The transition takes the least amount of time in any triathlon. However, getting it wrong is disastrous. Kaya, preparation is the key. Kinakailangan paghandaan. You need to know your way around the transition area. A smooth and quick transition can make a big difference in finishing the race strong. In the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy, we see the second generation of Israelites in a transition area. They were about to enter the promised land coming from the wilderness. And this generation of Israelites, the second generation, were camped east side of the Jordan River doon sa plains of Moab across the city of Jericho. They were near the promised land that had been promised centuries earlier to their forefathers. The children who had left Egypt na mga sandaling ito were now adults ready to conquer and settle in the promised land. Pero before that could happen, the Lord reiterated through Moses His covenant with them. It was important to God that they were prepared to enter the promised land. So, they should be reminded of His covenant na maging faithful sila kay God doon sa promised land. Kasi kung hindi, blessings or curses will fall upon them depending sa kanilang response. And unlike the unconditional covenant God made with Abraham, the covenant between God and Israel as a nation was bilateral. A two-way covenant. Si God would keep His promise na pagpalain sila bilang isang bansa kung sila ay mananatiling tapat sa Kanya. Kaya Moses reviewed the law at the doorstep of the promised land at that transition area in the plains of Moab, urging this new generation to re-covenant with God to recommit themselves to His ways. If we are to summarize Deuteronomy, it would go something like this. Remember to love God and keep His commandments. And Moses concludes this in chapter 30, verse 19 to 20. It says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, 
blessings and curses. Now, choose life. So that you and your children may live. And that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to His voice and hold fast to Him. For the Lord is your life. And He will give you many years in the land He swore to give to your fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today, we are transitioning from this pandemic. We are slowly transitioning from online to on-site. We are transitioning from 2021 to 2022. Remember, it's December. And mula sa scripture na ating binasa, we see that in transitioning, we must choose wisely. In choosing wisely, number one, we must choose life. God told them to choose life. Yun ang pinaka-wise na choice. And in choosing life, okay, God told them okay, to love Him, to love the Lord your God and listen to His voice, to walk in obedience by keeping His commands, decrees, and laws, and to not worship other gods. Sino nga ba yung mga pagan gods na naroroon in Cana? Nandoon si Baal, si Asherah, at si Molech. And God told them to not worship these pagan gods. They were only to worship Him if they were to have life. So napakalaga na, mas, na masabi ni God John to this generation of Israelites through Moses. And today, in choosing life, just like what was mentioned to them, if we apply it now, in choosing life, for us to have life as Christians, number one, we must choose to worship. Whether yan a private worship, our personal Bible reading in our prayer times, or that is corporate worship, as a family, and as a church. We must choose to worship if we are to choose life. Isipin ninyo, how can we listen to God's voice if we are missing our personal times with God or missing our worship services? Or even if you are at a worship service, Pero distracted ka naman. Kadalasan ang nangyayari sa atin during this pandemic as we worship online, merong mga nag-worship pero nag-multitask. Nakikinig pero may ginagawa ding ibang bagay. Hindi nakafocus ng gusto sa pag-worship. And if we are to have life as Christians, then we must choose to focus on worship when it is time to worship. Hindi dapat tayo distracted. Kasi kapag distracted tayo, hindi natin maririnig kung ano ang gustong iparating ni God sa atin ng mga bagay na kinakailangan nating gawin o sulit. Listening to God's voice is seen in our obedience. Kaya nga, if we are to choose life, we must listen and choose to obey. Obedience is seen when we worship God and know His decrees. How can you obey God? How can you choose to obey God kung hindi mo alam kung anong kanya sinasabi? How can you obey if you do not know what to obey. Ano nga ba mga commands and decrees ni God? And para sa atin ngayon, ang mga commands and decrees ni God, they were written or they are written in the Bible. Nung panahon ng second generation of Israelites, okay, kinakailangan silang sabihan at remind ni Moses and in fact, yung mga commands and decrees ni God were written in a stone 
tablet or in stone tablets, tayo ang commands and decrees ni God ay nakasulat sa Biblia. So napakahalaga na bilang mga Kristiyano, alam natin kung ano ang nakasulat sa Biblia. Hindi pa pwede ang ating kristyanismo ay nakabase lamang sa emosyon, kinakailangan ang ating pagiging kristyano ay nakabase doon sa nakasulat sa Biblia. Ang gusto nga ni God, ba tayo mag-worship in the truth and in the spirit at sa natin makatagpuan ng katotohanan, yan ay nakasaad sa Biblia. Kaya nga kung ikaw ay isang batang kristyano, napakahalaga na mabasa mo ang Biblia sa kabuuan nito. You may start by reading the New Testament or you may take an APLA course to broaden your understanding of the Bible or you may join quiet time groups. Yan, yan, yan ang marami tayo ngayon sa, sa iba't ibang mga churches at sectors. Maraming mga quiet time groups na nangyayari every single day para malaman mo ng mas malalim ang salita ng Panginoon Diyos. Para naman sa mga mature or old Christians, napakahalaga na nabasa na natin ang Bible from cover to cover. Hindi lamang knowing the cover, but reading it from cover to cover. Nabasa na natin ang Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Kung maari nga, nabasa natin sa ibang, hindi lamang sa NIV, kundi sa mga ibang versions din para mas makita natin ang Biblia sa ibang lingwahe. Makakatulong to para mas lalo natin itong maunawaan. And if you are an old Christian and you have not written or you have not read, read the Bible from cover to cover, then I want to encourage you or even challenge you to set up a plan to read the Bible for a year. Read it from cover to cover. We must continue to have a learner's heart. Whether you are a young Christian or an old Christian or even maybe it's your first time to attend our worship services, our worship service rather, and I really want to encourage you to study the Bible. Have a learner's heart para matutunan ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoon Diyos. Kasi kung hindi mo alam ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoon Diyos, ano ang iyong susundin? So, if you choose to obey, then it starts with studying the Bible, knowing it, and then applying it in your life. Kaya nga when you choose to obey, magpapatawad ka, kahit kung minsan mahirap magpatawad, mag-evangelize ka, kahit kung minsan hindi mo feel mag-evangelize, okay? magsiserve ka, kahit kung minsan pagod ka na, magsasacrifice ka through your giving because God calls us to give sacrificially and He wants us to be cheerful. We can choose to obey okay, because we know that it is written in the Bible and it is what God so desires. Kaya nga, if we are to choose life, then let's worship God. Let's know the Bible and then follow what it says. At kapag nangyari yun, magkakaroon ng kulay ang iyong buhay bilang isang Kristiyano. Second point, choose faithfulness. In verse 20, sinasabi doon that we have to hold fast to Him. In other translations, at sinabi doon, cling to Him. If applied in marriage, the word is living. Ang ibig sabihin is to glue, to adhere, to join, or to stick. Sa Hebrew, yung word na ginamit sa Genesis is more expressive. Okay, to cling, to adhere, to abide or fast together, or to follow. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng cleave. And dito, sinabi ni Gav that they were to cling to Him. They were to cleave to God. He is to be their only God. 
kagaya ng binanggit ko sa first point, there were a lot of pagan gods around them that can get their attention. And Moses knew this was going to be a big problem for them. So kaya sinabihan niya itong mga Israelites na ito to cling to God, to fix their eyes on Him, to stick to Him, to stay faithful to Him for better or for worse. Today, we must fix our eyes on God. We must cling to God. He is to be the focus of our life. But sometimes, we forget God in many ways. Sa paanong paraan natin nakakalimutan si God? Some forget God in times of prosperity. Pero tandaan ninyo, sabi in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17 to 18, sabi doon, you may say to yourself, my power and my strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me, but remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. Pero sometimes, kapag nagpo-prosper tayo, kapag nabibless tayo ng gusto, nakakalimutan natin si God. Nakakalimutan natin magpasalamat. Nakakalimutan natin na, na mag-focus sa Kanya. In this, nag-focus tayo doon sa blessing kaysa sa nagbigay ng blessing. Iwasan natin mangyari yun. Huwag natin kalimutang magpasalamat palagi sa Diyos kapag tayo ay bine-bless o nagpo-prosper. At sa maraming paraan na ipapakita yun. Sa pag-folk nyo, yung ating pasasalamat sa Kanya. Unang paraan na ipapakita natin yun sa ating pagbibigay. Kaya alam natin na siya ang bigay kaya hindi tayo nag-atubili na magbigay sa Kanya. Through our giving. Whether through ministry offering or through giving to those who are in need. Kasi binless nga tayo ni God. So hindi tayo nag-atubili magbigay sa Kanya at tumulong sa iba. So, do not forget God in times of prosperity. Of course, thank God and help others. But sometimes, people forget God in times of prosperity. Pero ganun din naman, some forget God in times of adversity. Instead of rushing to God's presence kapag may problema, anong ginagawa? We try to solve our problems on our own. Nakakalimutan natin si God. We take matters into our own hands. In reality, kapag merong adversity o merong problema, ginagamit nga yun ni God para kunin ang ating atensyon. So, so in some ways, meron kang pinagdadaan ng problema o challenge ngayon. Think of it. Baka gustong kunin ni God ang iyong atensyon dahil merong ibang kumukuha ng atensyon mo ngayon. Gusto niya na lumapit ka sa kanya at maunawaan mo na siya lamang ang solusyon sa iyong problema. Kesyo yan ay pang pinansyal o pang kalusugan o problemang nagbunsod mula sa pandemya ito na ating pinagdadaanan. Pangatlo, some forget God in times of peace. Nakakalungkot mag-isipin. We find no need for God kapag okay yung sitwasyon eh. All is well. Walang problema. So, we get complacent. We forget God. Iwasan natin yung mangyari yun. In good times and in bad times, we must remember the Lord. Pangapat, some forget God in decision making. In the choice of career, sa pagpili ng mga kasama sa buhay, o sa pag-develop ng karakter na kinakailangan baguhin, we forget God in our decision making. It's very important that God is part of our decision making. Now we consider, okay, we consider what God feels, we consider His direction in the Bible, if we are to choose a career, or if we are to choose a partner in life, we must consider what He is saying in our decision-making. 
Don't forget God sa mga ganong pagkakataon. Mas lalo natin siyang kailangan sa ating buhay. And it goes on to say na kapag ikaw nga ay gagawa ng desisyon na importante, you read your Bible, you ask God okay, to help Him reveal His will for you in this situation, but as well, you ask God and get advice from a person who also is seeking God that may be able to give you a godly advice sa mga bagay na gusto mong pag-desisyonan. Huwag natin kalimutan si God sa mga pagkakataon na ito. Ito natin ang ating atensyon sa Kanya. Let us cling to Him. Let us stay close to Him. Practically speaking, you stay close to God. You cling, you, you, you cling to God by being close to Him. Get close to God. Cling to God. I picture Derek clinging to my leg when he was young. He loves being with me. Pero imposibleng mangyari yun, imposibleng magkling siya sa akin kung hindi ko siya katabi o kasama. It's the same with you. It's the same with me. To cling to God, you must get close to Him. Practically speaking, you cling to the Bible, you keep God's Word in your heart. So you get close to God. Pangalawa, okay, you let go. You can't cling if your hands are full. Your hands can cling more tightly if they are not full of something else. Kung walang ibang hinahawakan ang iyong kamay. What do you need to let go of? Unforgiveness? Bitterness? Hurts? So, pinanghahawakan natin yun. Hinanam ng pangan natin eh. Your own agenda? Pride? Or insecurity? Alam nyo, mahirap na bitawan ng mga bagay na to. It's hard to release something that feels like a part of you. Even if sometimes we know it's wrong. Ang hirap bitawan. But, is it really worth letting go so you can cling to God and be secure? Yes, it's worth letting go. Alam nyo, personally speaking, I need to let go of my insecurities. As a Christian and as a leader, marami akong mga insecurities in life. And sometimes I look at other Christians or other leaders, inisip ko sana kagaya, kagaya uh, nagagawa kong ginagawa niya o kat, katulad ko siya. I feel insecure. Hindi ko na-accomplish yung na-accomplish ng iba. And sometimes, that feeling of insecurity stops me from doing what God wants me to do. Feeling ko hindi ako capable. Feeling ko hindi ko kaya. Feeling ko hindi ko magagawa ng maayos. I feel insecure. And it was through a godly counsel from a dear friend ng pangalan ay Kevin Egot. When I was expressing all of my insecurities to him, may he just encouraged me and told me that with God, I can be secure. And I had to really wrestle with that. Dahil nakita ko na in my heart, ang security ko ay nasa accomplishments. Nasa nagagawa ko. At magagawa ko pa. Instead of my security being with God. And what He can do through me, through my life. 
and I had to let go of the insecurities. And even up until right now, I'm still praying every single morning to help for to God to help me overcome my insecurities. And kaya nga, doing that is drawing me closer to God every single day. Because I know I need to let go of it. Because with God, I am secure. My present is secure. My future is secure. Kaya nga, sa iyo, ano ang bagay na kinakailangan mo let go? I want to encourage you, let it go. And when you let it go, you will experience a sense of freedom and security na hindi mo maaramdaman o hindi mo bibitiwan ng bagay na yan na pinanghahawakan mo. So you want to cling to God? As well, you take action. You get close, you let go, and you take action. You can't cling by being passive. You need to be active. The effort to cling is absolutely active. To cling requires action and energy. So, kaya nga, practically speaking, you have to be intentional in pursuing your relationship with God. You have to be intentional in clinging to God. Practically setting up a consistent time in praying, in reading your Bible, in worshiping. Hindi pa pwede kung kailan ka lang may oras. Dapat intentional. Ginagawan mo talaga yan at nilalagyan ng oras. It takes action. And you plan your action. You set your time to worship. Hindi kung kailan ka lang walang pasok. O kung kailan ka lang pa pwede. You make time to worship. And kagaya ng binanggit ko kanina in the first point, you focus on worship. Iwasan na natin yung multitasking habang nag-worship. And as well, if you are to take action as Christians, staying close to God, you will serve. Because our God, Jesus Christ, He came to serve and give His life as a ransom for many. Kaya nga, if you cling to Him and you take action, you will serve. Your clinging to the Lord produces a heart to serve. The heart of Jesus is to serve. Kaya nga during this pandemic, gusto ko lang talagang i-lift up yung lahat ng mga children's ministry teachers and workers. Hindi lamang ng Kabite, pero ng iba't ibang mga simbahan at sektor. Alam niyo, may sa Kabite, many of those who were baptized in our youth and family ministry are kingdom kids who passed through the children's ministry. And alam niyo, pag meron nga nababaptize na teen sa Kabite, makikita mo yung mga children's ministry teachers, okay? they are teary-eyed. Kasi nakikita nila yung batang yun na nababaptize, kasabihin nila, okay, naging part yun ng kanilang ministry. Tinuruan nila yun, tinalagaan nila yun. Naging bahagi ng kanilang buhay yun. At yung batang yun, naging bahagi din ng kanilang buhay. And now they're disciples of Jesus. Kaya grateful ako sa mga CM teachers and workers namin sa Kabite na pinangunguna nila buong yung pensikat at yung lahat ng mga teachers na meron kami. I lift them up to our Lord and I pray for them. And when I think of it, ang anak ko is in the preteens already. And alam niyo I want to lift up the Manalos, okay, na nag-over sa aming preteens ministry. Yung, yung, yung aming mga preteens every single day. Okay? Meron silang prayer time with another preteen and they would pray and read their Bible and I love the concept na ginawa nga ng mga monalas lalo na si Kati na sinabi niya na ang dinedevelop nila sa mga batang ito ay yung habit. Even if sometimes may sige pa lang yung prayer nila but that's fine. It's developing the habit. It's helping them at their young age take action by praying and by reading scripture. Alam mo mga kapatid, if you, if you cling to God, you will naturally serve. Kaya I lift up all of those people 
who continually serve in the Lord. Pero when you take action, you repeat and repeat again. You never stop acting okay, on your faith. You never stop holding on to Jesus. You refuse to let go. Even if sometimes life is hard, this past couple of years has been hard for us because of this pandemic. Pero alam niyo, you continue to take action and hold on to your faith. And today, as we are transitioning, I look forward to having our hybrid worship services. I look forward to worshiping God again with the body. And, with, and it's fine if it's limited pa lang. Ang pinaka-importante is we are able to worship again. And that has happened because we have chosen to choose life during the pandemic and now transitioning out of this pandemic. Kaya nga, mga kapatid, in closing, and yes, I mentioned it, we are transitioning. Let us remember the words of our Lord. Choose life. Piliin natin ang buhay. It's the wisest choice that you can make. Sa mga nakakapanood ng video na to na aming kaibigan, I want to encourage you. Choose life. Study the Bible. Set up a time to study the Bible with the friend that invited you to this online worship service. Choose life. Worship Him, obey Him, and be faithful to Him until the end. To God be the glory. Amen.